What have you noticed in where the drinking culture is headed? What's wild is that Gen Z literally views drinking like millennials viewed cigarettes. Alcohol is the one drug where people are shamed for not doing it versus actually indulging. Ashwarya is a serial Silicon Valley entrepreneur, TEDx, and global speaker. Her life mission is to help others and herself live a more intentionally led life. And it led her to starting a Fresh Sip, a platform in the non-alcoholic beverage space in an effort to bring more intentionality into drinking culture. For those who only like connect via alcohol, alcohol is that gateway to vulnerability because God forbid we can be vulnerable and share our feelings. But is it true vulnerability if you're using alcohol as a means to open up? That's mm -hmm. the question, right? We wanted to normalize like optionality within drinking culture saying like, hey, you can be cool and chic and normal and not drink alcohol. What is your relationship with drinking alcohol? Have you ever imagined a time where perhaps maybe you can be curiously sober? If you've answered yes to any of those questions, my guest today is going to have you rethink and reframe your relationship with alcohol. What are some of the conversations that you perhaps can suggest that we can start to have in our own friends groups and even in our own families around kind of reshaping our relationship yeah. with alcohol? I think I feel like it has been on the radar for for me and for us to kind of brave this new avenue of why are people getting more sober curious right why do they care this is like a <laughs> trending thing it is and you know what like i feel like a couple years ago when we launched a fresh sip i got so many crazy looks like why would you do that like what is there really a market why won't you drink water can't you just have some club soda people didn't get it and i was like just wait just wait in a couple years you'll get it yeah because i feel like you go on tiktok mm -hmm. and the Gen Zs and the, the generation <laughs> under that, everyone's like vilifying alcohol and it's not it's it's not the cool thing to do anymore. You know what's wild is that Gen Z literally views drinking like millennials viewed cigarettes. Alcohol to Gen Z is like millennials and cigarettes. That is wild. That is wild. That's I mean, because I feel like we get our we now get our learnings from everything Gen Z yeah. on TikTok. And I feel like a lot of those viral reels have is literally what sparked this sober curious movement. Yeah, I mean, think about the culture that we grew up in. We grew up in the Facebook age where we posted 60 photos of one night of going out drinking and we wanted to seem cool. We wanted to seem like everybody um, knows what we did last night versus Gen Z is not about that. If anything, they want to show that they're doing a million side hustles. They're waking up in the morning and they're creating more of this aspirational like lifestyle, which has its own challenges. But I do think that you know, being more intentional and being more conscious of your wellness and yourself is only a positive. Yeah, no, I love, I, I totally love that you're bringing that up. I didn't realize that you're right. I mean, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> what were we doing? We were, yeah. we were totally posting photos right. of our last night things and we wanted everybody to know <laughs> what we were doing. And now I feel like Gen Z is on a mission to completely, yeah, shift and advocate for the things and and to really bring out like why why drinking is actually a necessity and 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 so i want to know because you're so fascinating and the reason why i wanted to bring you on not only because now you are kind of creating this movement mm to actually be one of the platforms because I see all of these Instagram ads of you know all of these uh, non-alcoholic spritzer beverages and while you know I've never really been much of a drinker I feel like shout out to the moms out there I mean I feel like it's only my my alcoholic consumption <laughs> has gone up <laughs> only because I've become a mother um, but when I first heard about your platform I'm like oh my gosh yeah it, we need to have a hub yeah. to kind of house all of these new different non-alcoholic products. Totally. And so can you take us through that journey and what you kind of noticed and, yeah. and the trends that kind of got you to where you are? 
absolutely. Yeah. So I've been in the startup space for the last eight or nine years, and it's been really interesting to kind of see what's trending and what people care about. Um, I had my own health journey actually, and I got like when I got really burnt out building my last company, I got physically ill as well, and I didn't want to continue to add more toxins into my body. So I actually stopped drinking alcohol for a, a couple of years uh, just to make sure that I wasn't making it harder for my body to heal. And what was going on with your body, if you don't? Mind yeah, anything? so um, I had a ton of hormonal imbalances. I had a bunch of women's health issues. Um, it was scary like it was a lot of things that were happening at the same time and it forced me to pause it forced me to reevaluate my relationships in my life it forced me to actually shut the company that i was building at that time the web3 space in 2018 was extremely toxic and kind of step away as an empath like i wanted to be more aligned and i didn't want to be chasing like that external validation and and chasing like what other people told me what was real. And so as I went through my whole spiritual journey mm -hmm. and I cut back on on drinking, I noticed that there was this trend in Europe with new non-alcoholic products coming to market. And as if anybody knows this stuff in the consumer space, the States is usually behind when it comes to these consumer product really? trends. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Europe is a little ahead. Okay. And so I saw this trend kind of kicking off in Europe and I was I was pretty bullish that it was going to be the next vegan gluten free trend in the States. I had from personal experience and anecdotal experience known that the benefits of just like being able to have a little bit more control over my my lifestyle and my evenings and even my mornings for that matter. Mm -hmm. And so we launched a small community at the end of 2020. And me and my co-founder, we just this was during COVID. This is during COVID, when and people are drinking even more. There, it was actually so polarizing. People either drank a ton more, or they stopped drinking because they were like, "I'm not out." So it was a very interesting shift. And I think with any like massive changes that people make in their lifestyle, it's usually a trigger, right? And I think COVID acted as a big accelerant and trigger for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so when we launched this community, we wanted to not talk about like non-alk from this sobriety lens we wanted to normalize like optionality within drinking culture saying like hey you can be cool and chic and normal and not drink alcohol mm. and it doesn't have to be this binary thing the word sober curiosity came out in 2020 2021 when people realized it's this spectrum right it was somebody's book too i can't remember there's the there's so many there's amazing so many books, books that have come out yeah. and i think what's really beautiful about that is then it makes people feel seen and so our community was the first time people could take a breath and be like oh, thank you for like saying what's been in my head or like i'm so tired of being shamed for not drinking alcohol is the one drug where people are shamed for not doing it versus actually indulging now that's shifted in the last couple of years but mm -hmm. that's kind of where we started and from there we were really community driven the community said hey there are all these new products coming into this space and we thought about launching our own product but in reality this is a new vertical new industry let's support all of the incredible players in the space as they're growing and so we decided to a do true that. AC format <laughs> of course <laughs> i mean right if you could do it all no <laughs> um so our, our community basically said, hey, there are all these products, but I don't want to know what's just alcohol versus alcohol free. What are like, can you tell me what would actually align with my personal preferences? Vegan, gluten free, halal certified. So we made our platform so you could search through all the hundreds of products that are coming into the space based off of your needs, your preferences, and then find them and being able and for us to ship them. And what have you noticed in, you know, like, in where the drinking culture is headed because I feel like I was just at a, a restaurant in we were doing date night my husband and I Ajit and I and I felt like I was bullied by this sommelier at the restaurant because I'm like I'm, I don't I don't feel like drinking tonight yeah. you know like there are just some days where you're kind of like okay and I just didn't feel like it and I felt like you know the the sommelier and it was a, a you know it was a nice restaurant and so he was kind of suggesting that we should do the pairing of mm. the wine, et cetera, et cetera. And I get that, you know, some really big foodies think it's like a it's it's a thing and it's a full mm -hmm. experience. Totally understand. 
But I'm like, oh my goodness, like he kept coming in. Are you sure you don't want to just try this? Just try this one and it goes really well and et cetera. And and we kind of just felt guilted into doing this thing that we didn't really want to. And I was like, oh, wow, is it because nobody's drinking Mm -hmm. that they feel the need to really push this, you know, the, the drinking menu where we were like, did it really feel like it? Totally. And, you know, it's funny that you bring up the the pairings. We're actually seeing now non-alcoholic pairings for a lot of things, especially in the California world. People love to be California sober, right? And so we actually did an event with a very like high profile tech mogul and we did this entire pairing and it was all non-alc. There was not a drop of alcohol at this event for this like six course um, beautiful, beautiful dinner that was set up for about 50 people. And so people are looking and Um, We're seeing a lot of celebrities now like talk about their relationship with alcohol. And again, it doesn't have to be this somber, like serious thing, right? We find that about 82% of people that consume non-alcoholic beverages, and I'm talking adult non-alc beverages, also consume alcohol. So that just shows that this is not like like you versus me. This is just about like inclusive drinking culture. Mm Yes, and I remember going to a girlfriend's 40th not too long ago. It was a couple years ago now. And it's interesting for those who only like connect via alcohol. Sure. And I was at this weekend event and I'm thinking, okay, you know, we're going to do some witchy things (laughs) and we're going to, you know, meditate in the mornings and do some yoga. And it was very much, let's have mimosas at breakfast. Let's have, you know, sangrias at lunch. Mm. And in order to get on the dance floor, you need to have three shots before you actually even dance. And I'm like, what? (laughs) doing because that's that's not my life that's the complete opposite now I'm not trying to throw shade for whoever wants to kind of connect and relate and commune in that way but that was just the complete opposite of it's like you couldn't even have one sober moment for the three days that a lot of women are together and people who haven't really you know seen each other in years but to connect because alcohol is that gateway to vulnerability totally. because god forbid we can be vulnerable and share our feelings but is it true vulnerability if you're using alcohol as a means to open up mm-hmm. that's the question right what have you found kind of being both in the esoteric world and then being in like the high tech world i've noticed that at the end of the day it comes down to identity right it's what people associate themselves with you see the most spiritual people identifying themselves as a specific practitioner and that becomes their entire identity their entire personality or this is my company and this is what i spend 80 hours a day doing and their entire personality is what they are is that company and so i find that sometimes when people are indulging in different things and and again it could be like it could be something as like simple as like working out regularly or alcohol it's like we go all in because we want our identity to be like surrounded with that and i think alcohol maybe just acts as an easier way to open up and realize that like you're more than what you're self-identifying with Mm -hmm. I'm reading a book right now called Stolen Focus, and it's a really interesting book, and it talks about like just kind of getting away from technology and about like, and and my word for this year, every year I choose a word, and this year my word is movement. And I came in thinking like big moves, action, change, Um, but I actually found myself in the last couple of weeks moving very slow. Mm. Like we can't actually multitask. We can do one thing and then we can switch to another, but our brain has one processor. We're not a computer. We can't do many things at once. And so actually moving slower is allowing me to move further. Mm. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. When, when we're doing a million things, it's actually to distract us from being present. And I think a lot of people, especially folks that are like ambitious, you know, that Indian culture right there, right? Like we put so much pressure, but allowing us to move slower and connect internally Mm. without all these external substances is actually what's really powerful and it's also you know the this whole idea of just being mindful Mm. when we are kind of even when we are consuming I think so often as we know alcohol is a depressant sure and with in the use of alcohol 
Yes, because culturally it's been the norm to that's that's what we do. We have yeah. a few and we kind of loosen up. And I even for me, you know, still now there are days, you know, it's been a crazy long day <laughs> with my children. Shout out to the parents out there. <laughs> and so and and I'm like, OK, nope, I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. And then I'm like, oh, I just need that glass of wine. Mm. But I've had to ask myself, OK, Is it because I really enjoy it? Right. Is it, like, what does it give me? Like, versus having a magnesium tea. Does it have the same effect for me? And I'm I'm exploring this for myself right now. And I'm just curious for, you know, our Brave Table listeners, perhaps maybe you start this with yourself. Again, no throwing shade. If you're really enjoying it, enjoy it. You know, I have friends who don't drink all year, but then they'll have that, like, really nice glass of wine. And for me, I think that, restricting myself or saying I'm going to do dry January or dry May or whatever it is. If I put a restriction on myself, kind of like what I did when I stopped doing sugar, Mm. I was like all about sugar in my 20s. And that is kind of how like I ruined my gut in so many ways. But what did sugar do? It provided me comfort. It provided me safety. It provided me with support uh it provided me a an escape yeah of feeling my emotions it was emotional eating so you know to ask yourself and when i restricted the sugar when i said nope i'm gonna do a dry sugar month (laughs) i felt like i was like and then you're feeling guilty and shameful for you know trying to sneak a chocolate bar and all of the things so i feel like it's reframing then the relationship that we have. What does it actually do? Because I think to your right. point, it's been ingrained in us from such a, a young age in society. I mean, we see our parents doing it and and that has been the cultural norm. But now when I go to sisterhood events, things like that, or any girlfriend mm-hmm. events, we're having tea. Mm-hmm. No one's ha- like you're kind of you're kind of the outcast now if you're having it's it's polarizing right like I think it's the perfectionism in us that it's like all or nothing right no sugar or like all the sugar like no alcohol or all the alcohol and then you're judging people (laughs) who want like the cookies right you're like oh you don't have self-control but like in reality like that's it's that's not the thing it's actually being able to acknowledge you're human and humans have like different experience it's it's ebbing and flowing and like allowing us to to build a strong enough relationship to say like as you said do i want the taste of this drink or am i just wanting to chill and and magnesium tea is gonna is gonna cut it for me Mm -hmm. um i will be the first to admit i still do drink alcohol Mm -hmm. i am not like 100 percent sober um but it is very very rare and intentional when i do drink it's usually because i want that glass of red wine maybe i'm at a vineyard or I want that margarita, that spicy margarita, right? But I'm probably, actually, I'm almost never drinking when I'm just out socially with friends because I don't need that social lubricant to be able to like be myself. Mm. Let's talk about that. Yeah. For those who are feeling like socially awkward when they go to the networking events, and I think even there was a point when I would go to kind of these new events, either building, you know, one or two, whatever the new businesses that were up at the time, and you're meeting people kind of in the industry who maybe have been like longer than you, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so you're you're just wanting to kind of fit in and you need right. that, you know, you need the social lubricant like in your hand or when you go to the wedding that you don't really know right. anybody, you're kind of like, okay, let me get my liquid courage with me. Yeah. So, and often I would hold it because everyone else would have a drink, but I wouldn't really drink it right it would be the it would be the crutch (laughs) you know and honestly it's okay grab your drink turn your straw around and like play with it like that's a nervous tick that I probably still do yeah um but it doesn't need to be alcohol in your cup right Mm -hmm. um I remember before I was even in this space when I was going through my health journey I would bring kombucha like in my bag Mm -hmm. and I would go to parties and I'd put it in like that solo cup or whatever just because I didn't want to deal with that conversation yeah so it's also okay you don't have to scream it from the rooftop saying hey I'm cutting back on drinking or hey I'm not drinking Mm -hmm. you can do what you need to do to make yourself feel comfortable right yeah but I do think it's beneficial to say hey like to my friends like hey I not really feeling like drinking a lot it's hurting my stomach or you know say whatever you need to say to make yourself feel like okay and Mm -hmm. like I think we put this pressure to like 
to like really own what we're doing but it's okay you can take baby steps and you can also like go backwards and like change your mind like Mm -hmm. we don't have to decide and stick to it we also put a lot of pressure that like this is the decision this is my life now and that's scary to say like, oh, I am never drinking again or my relationship with alcohol is forever changed. Right. That's it's, so much. And it's, it, it is a big, it's it's a huge pressure because again, that's a label. And yeah. that, again, that's a, you know, that's an identity piece. It's right. kind of like when we were going through the paleo slash vegan movement, yeah. you know. Paleo. Like I don't eat carbs. I only eat like tons of fat and meat, right? Like, <laughs> well, right. And then you're vilifying the vegans right. for, you know, having their moment mm-hmm. yet. And then the vegans are kind of, you know, throwing shade on the paleo meat eating folks. So you're right. It, it gives us a sense of identity and mm-hmm. something to advocate for. Yet, can we also be OK with being able to change our minds yeah. when we're maybe going through another season of life? Yeah. And so... How have, because you've studied in a lot of these esoteric practices, Mm -hmm. you have now been trained as an EFT tapping expert. Tell us a little bit about tapping. I mean, I'm obviously a big fan of tapping. (laughs) Uh, And also, how do you think these modalities has helped you kind of further grow a fresh sip? Oh my gosh. Um, I love tapping. Uh, I've been tapping for like many years and I started using it for my clients once I became a practitioner myself. I think there are so many like repeating beliefs that we have. And when I did my Vipassana, which is like a 10 day silent retreat, I thought I was a crazy person because I'm hearing these thoughts repeat in my head again and again. And I'm like, oh, my God, I am psychotic. And um, but the reality of it is these are just like subconscious, like programmed beliefs that I have like been repeating to myself mm-hmm. since I was a young girl. Mm-hmm. And um, there was something that was said to us during that session that like really like woke me up. And it was, you know, if someone says something negative to you or something mean, they've only said it once. That's like drawing a line in water. It disappears. But when you say it again and again, it's like taking a line and uh, taking a stick and drawing a line in in um, sand. Mm. It lasts a little longer. And if you internalize it and it becomes part of your core, that's like taking a line and drawing it in rock. It's a lot deeper. And what EFT tapping does is it uses your meridian system and it actually allows you to tap through and break that physical level of um, whatever that experience, that limiting belief you have that that you're holding on to. Mm-hmm. And so I found it really powerful to like just move forward, break a lot of these patterns that I thought I had emotionally or mentally moved on, but then put me in that situation. I'm right back there. Right. And so what's been really meaningful in terms of how we've like uh, like uh, integrated it with a fresh sip is mm-hmm. I'm really, really blessed to work with uh, one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really rare that you can actually get into a working relationship. And I still call her on the weekend just to like gab about life. Right. And people often ask, like, how do you guys get through like hard points, like conflict? And I think it's because we actually have taken time to like integrate these modalities into the culture and the fabric of our, of our startup and of our business. So after any like high intense time, we actually do a postmortem. I tell her everything that pissed me off about what she said. She does the same. And we work through it. We're like, okay, like next time, like communication is so key. Mm-hmm. But when we're feeling disconnected, we also like do parts work. We do tapping. Um, We have a coach that we work with, right? Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes people are like, that does not matter because it doesn't affect the bottom line, but it affects the bottom line so much because if you are not in your, if you're not in your like power, if you're not in operating from your genius and you're not creating space for the people that you're working with to do the same, there's, you're going to hit like a a roadblock. There's only so far you're going to get. Right. And so that's been super incredible for us just in terms of like our working dynamic and now as our team is growing we're starting to integrate that for everybody around us as well Mm. and i mean i all of these practices are just i feel like they're they're like non-negotiables when you're Mm -hmm. having when you're building something completely brand new that doesn't really exist and you're also like paving the way for other people and or companies 
to do the same and it starts with it starts with you guys yeah and I kind of want to even just like integrate it back to this overarching theme of do we need to reframe our relationship with alcohol and can I'm sure you probably use tapping yeah. as a form and way to kind of break the the belief systems that we had in our in our body. What's an example maybe of maybe tapping that we can yeah. do if somebody wants to try it today to help reframe their relationship with alcohol? Can you give us yeah. like a, some guidance? You know, it doesn't actually deal with alcohol. It actually deals with control or release of control, or fear of being seen, fear of being accepted, those are generally some of the beliefs that are are getting shielded by us using alcohol, right? Like if we act silly and we're not drinking alcohol, we can't blame that on the alcohol, right? That's our self. And if somebody doesn't accept us for who we are today, that's kind of where the challenge comes in, right? Because if you are showing up as your authentic self, there is a chance that not the entire world might not like you, right? You won't be able to blame it on alcohol. You won't be able to blame it on alcohol and you're going to be more present. And so a lot of the tapping that we could do is like more like um, accepting yourself like as you are today and kind of talking about like, I want control. I need control. I'm fearful to be seen. Alcohol helps me be like who I am. And without it, people might not like me. I might not be good as I am today, right? We can talk through things like that. But again, it has nothing to do with alcohol. It has everything to do with the fears and all of those different elements that surround alcohol, right? It like it again, like I talked about or you mentioned uh, my my life's mission, which is to help myself and others live intentionally. This is taking it away from that, right? And it's like being intentional again is just having a little bit more self-awareness in, mm-hmm. in, in terms of understanding what is actually underneath that surface. And it requires us to be able to do the work, to take the personal responsibility. It's scary. And, and yeah, it's scary. It's easier <laughs> to have a drink. Truly. It's yeah. easier to have a drink <laughs> in order to ask the question, okay, what am I fearing going to this big networking event? Yeah. What am I fearing going to this wedding solo stag? Uh, what am I fearing when I am going to this conference that I'm not going to know pretty yeah. much anybody and I have, I'm going to pitch my new idea. What am I fearing that I need the liquid courage mm. or the alcohol in order to kind of like what you said, that there's a chance that we may not feel accepted, wanted. Yep. We might feel rejected and any at the bare bones basics of any human dynamics in relationships we want to be seen we want to be heard we want to be understood right so what are some of the conversations that you perhaps maybe you know can suggest that we can start to have in our own friends groups and even in our own families around kind of reshaping our our relationship with alcohol Well, for one, I think we need to stop making it a big deal, Mm. right? Like, I think we say, like, we're, we make, we put so much, like, pressure. Um, So I I say, one, take the pressure out and, and keep it more casual. Like, I tell many bartenders when I go there, I'm like, hey, can you make this non-alcoholic? I go on dates and I'm like, oh, can I grab, can I get this margarita, but can I get a non-alcoholic version? And sometimes my date looks at me, he's like, oh, do you not drink? And I'm like, eh, I'm not a big drinker. And I just move on. I don't make it a big deal, right? And I think that's one piece. The other thing is to say like, hey, like this has been affecting me and, and I feel like I'm not being present in my morning meetings or I don't get my workouts in. It's like, how is it actually affecting your life? Mm-hmm. And what is the change that you want to make? And focus on that change. Hey, I'm actually focusing on launching this new podcast and I want to be crystal clear getting ready for that and focus on that positive rather than the reduction of what you're removing. Right. Those are just like aspects that are affecting that change that you're trying to create. Um, You know, it's the new year. Everybody has these New New Year's resolutions, right? Like focus on not the not drinking, but focus on what you're trying to accomplish. This year, people stopped saying dry January and they started saying damp January because, again, people are realizing this binary expectation makes people fall off the wagon. But if there's space for us to grow and iterate and make mistakes, 
then we might have a better relationship with alcohol in the future. Right. I feel like removing the idea of restriction. Yes. Yeah. You know, in, in any means that there is there there is room to swim. There is room to float. There is room to kind of start back again that there yeah. isn't. It's not just black and white. I think that, you know, with any sort of resolution. I mean, it's one of the reasons why resolutions don't re- necessarily change. Right. It's right. like we're talking about the things that we can't have. So it's a diet yeah. or it's a no sugar or it's it's or it's dry. Yeah. Whereas just even being so conscious in the word choice that we're actually using. Mm. And it's almost like to step into the next version or the next vision of yourself. Like what do you envision yeah. yourself to be? And I feel like, you know, a fresh sip is yeah. like, the, I mean, it's such good branding, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, yeah, it's, it is a fresh sip. It's a different change. Just kind of like talking about what you're talking with language. I think language is so powerful because every single sound has like a vibration, right? And our entire universe is built based off of that sound and that vibration. And so when we use like very strong words like I don't or I do, I think it comes down to that identity piece we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. We like saying oh i should do this puts so much pressure it also puts a lot of guilt like i'm not doing this right now right but the fact that you're even thinking about it means you're you're taking steps towards that Mm -hmm. and that awareness is actually saying hey like i want to drink less or um i want to change my relationship with alcohol or it's not I want to. It's I am changing my relationship with alcohol. Right, You're doing but, it right now by listening to this podca- right. podcast. <laughs> Somebody shared with you this podcast or you stumbled across it or you've. this has been in your subconscious mm-hmm. and you're here. Yeah. Now, whether to make whatever shift and change in your friends groups, in your, you know, perhaps even sharing this episode with a colleague or with a friend, yeah. with your lover, with your spouse, I think is one of the ways to start building that yeah thinking is the first step that means you're already doing it yeah and i i'm curious now that you've had this momentum Mm. you've done the research you've had the feedback groups for for a fresh sip and that was 2020 and now four years later Mm -hmm. what is the vision that you have for a fresh sip going forward now that we've normalized yeah. sober curious the sober curious mo- movement is big and now i feel here like to stay. <laughs> it's here to stay and i feel like a lot of even you know big health gurus are breaking down the effects of alcohol breaking down the effects of alcohol on long- longevity yeah. on our cells how we age where does that position you guys Yeah, it's a really exciting time. And the problem we were solving back in 2020 and 2021 was around optionality and more of that mindset. But like fast forward to today in 2024, the the problem we're really tackling is around accessibility and discovery. So about like 94% of the country, it takes two days for people to get a hold of these adult non-alcoholic beverages. We're in the instant gratification world. Nobody wants to wait two days for these beverages, right? Sure. And so we are really focusing on increasing that accessibility of these beautifully incredible new products, both through like our like online platform, pop-ups, retail. We're creating these, this very exciting omni-channel uh, experience in 2024. And as it comes out, we'll be like so excited to share even more. <laughs> oh my goodness, Ash. I've known you for a few years yeah. <laughs> and I'm so grateful in so many ways of kind of how you've been able to just blossom and Aww. share your wisdom and share your gifts with the world and really brave this new path and this new frontier. Mm. I feel like, you know, this is totally here to stay, yeah. but where can people get a hold of you, the company, before we get into our igniting round? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm available on TikTok, Instagram. My Instagram handle is the Aish. Uh, my website's theish.com. My TikTok handle is the Aish Fairy. And for a fresh sip, it's afreshsip.com. Um, it's take a fresh sip on Instagram and a fresh sip on every other social media platform oh my gosh yeah okay well what does it mean to be brave I feel like my definition or like where I'm brave every day changes because you know I'm human (laughs) I need to be brave in different aspects of my life every day 
But I think for me, it means like being vulnerable and sharing like the difficult parts of the journey, but also on the flip side, setting boundaries. Sometimes I think we can be too vulnerable and we think that's being brave, but also like upholding boundaries and saying no also allows you to build that self-respect and that can be brave as well. And what, what if any are your go-to practices that are elevating Mm. your life at this season? Ooh, um, I have built like a really incredible sadhana um, or morning practice and it is truly what grounds me. And and don't get me wrong, I don't do it every day, but I try. So I, I, it's very Ayurvedically rooted. Um, I oil pull in the morning, I do some dry brushing, and then after showering, I, I do a basic mantra and sound practice followed by some light yoga. Mm-hmm. And so to me, connecting with the earth and just connecting with myself allows me to tackle whatever the world is throwing my way. Because I'm telling you, I don't feel anchored, but like that sadhana, that morning practice truly does anchor me. So good. Yeah. So good. And I know you have a freebie for our Uh, audience Mm -hmm. to get started with tapping so we will put that in the show notes as well perfect (laughs) amazing well let's we're gonna wrap this up it was so amazing to have you on the brave table of thank you so much for having me I love this conversation and it's just been it's been really nice to be able to talk about this I feel like more of this needs to definitely happen and we're doing it so Mm -hmm. I feel like you'll be we'll be you are such a queen I am so happy to be here it's like part (laughs) part two is coming soon so stay tuned everyone until next time on the brave table all right everyone welcome back to the other side wow if this has not sparked you having more conversations, having more brave conversations with your friend groups in your work uh, environment, with your work colleagues, and really asking yourself, do I actually need that drink? Do I need alcohol? And what is my relationship with alcohol? What's my relationship with food? When do I actually need X, Y, and Z? I think this is such a brilliant episode that we can share with the closest people in our lives to start sparking more brave action and more brave intentions in what we want to do. And so if you want to get connected with Aish, you can definitely follow her and her journey on the Aish, A-I-S-H. I'm linking that in the show notes. She's also on TikTok at the Aish Fairy. Go ahead and follow her there as well as the Aish.com. We are also linking her EFT tapping practice. It's absolutely free. So go ahead and pick that up in the show notes. And if you want to order any of your non-alc beverages, go ahead to afreshsip.com. You can see all of the non-alcoholic beverages that she has on her site that can be shipped to your house. And you can see all of the new pop-ups there at Take a Fresh Sip on IG and a fresh sip on TikTok. Now, if you are curious to go into more of your healing journey with food as well as mindset changes and hacks, go ahead. There are three additional episodes to dive into on the show notes. And as always, if you haven't already left a five-star review, we love, 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 love your reviews. Thank you so much for tagging us at The Brave Table. You can tag me and tell us what part was your favorite on IG. We are always looking to feature your stories. And when you go ahead and screenshot your review, your five-star review on iTunes, go ahead and send it to media at globalgrit.co. That is media at globalgrit.co. And we will send you a free gift. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time on the bread table.